Hey guys, Vlad here with Amy Castro. So, it's kinda hard to hide. I've got a special treat for you guys today, and that is a comparison of different size refractors. Uh, for those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called abt-astro.com, and of course this YouTube channel as well, so if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, just overall, I've owned over uh, 100 scopes, uh, more accessories than I could count, and uh, I particularly love refractors. Um, currently, I've got them in a bunch of different sizes, so I figured I'd do this thing on a quick video to show you kind of the different sizes that are available, how they physically compare, and you know, kind of what you might expect to see uh, visually from them. And also, I'll touch a little bit on astrophotography as well. All right, all right. So size-wise, we're gonna start with the little guy and kind of work our way up. So basically, this video um, I just wanted to make right now because I have refractors in every size from three inch all the way up to seven inch currently. Um, so size-wise, comparison-wise, as you can see, there is a pretty big difference going up in size, with you know some kind of discrepancy in sizes. It would appear, right? So starting with the thermos, this is the Explore Scientific uh, 80 millimeter or 3 inch uh, carbon fiber tube. This then does have a dew shield that does retract, so uh, it does get longer if you you know take a slide out the dew shield and the dew shield is this part right here. Um, <clears throat> next up we've got the FSK 106. Uh, that's a four inch, a little bit over a four inch. Uh, that's actually a quadruple, it's more of like a um, imaging type of scope, which is kind of why I've got all my imaging gear on there. And then we've got my trusty, so this, so basically this is represent three inch, this is four inch, and then we're stepping up to the five inch. This is my um, Astrophysics 130GT. Uh, again, this one does have a retractable dew shield, so it will get longer. This is a fixed dew shield, so on this particular one it does not and in a second I'll retract these two shields so you kind of see what they compare as in. Um, next up we've got the FS128, the Takahashi FS128. Uh, so I actually have two 5 inch scopes right now. I kind of wanted to bring them both out just to show you a different size comparison with the scope that's got a fixed dew shield again versus one that has a collapsible dew shield. Also, this is an F6.2, this is an F8, so you can see even though they're both 5 inch scopes, you obviously have a very pronounced size difference. Next up, we've got a 6 inch, and that is a, um, that's the only Acromat actually out here, that's a 6 inch uh, Mead Acromat. And then, last but not least, we've got the Mead 178ED, 7 inch. That's an ED doublet, so I uh, consider it to be an APO. Um, awesome, awesome scope. Probably the only 7 inch that I'll ever be able to afford <laughs> in a refractor. Um, so, yeah, physically, size wise, there's that. Let me set the phone down. I'll retract the dew shields on the two scopes that do not have, or that have the retractable dew shields, so you can kind of see the size comparison better. And then we'll get into how they actually compare visually and for astrophotography. All right, all right, so those two scopes that have the retractable dew shields, I took them out so you kind of essentially directly see the comparison between the scopes. Um, Size-wise, I will mention the 80 millimeter, obviously, you know, that's by far the smallest scopes. They are noticeably smaller compared to a four inch scope, even if you have just like a 102, which is traditionally what a four inch is. Um, so there is a pretty big size difference there. Going from the 4 to the 5 inch, um, I would say the more kind of like common comparison would be, you know, like this guy here, the FSG 106, compared to the, um, and actually let me get a better angle, compared to the FS 128, which is this guy here. So it's a pretty, you know, pretty substantial size difference, right? The 130GT, this is actually very small for a fire and scope, very compact. Um, so that's kind of more of like the direct comparison there. Um, I would say that the 5 inch scope, so these two guys here, they're the last size that are comfortable to handle, especially in APOs. Once you get up to the 6 inch, so 
This is the guy that's representing the six inch. You know, they do get quite a bit bulkier. Even though these two, you know, size-wise, they're pretty similar. That's because this is a, you know, pretty high in APO. This is an entry level kind of Acromat. So the tube isn't quite as well baffled on this. That's why it's, you know, almost the same size as that guy, right? But if we, you know, if we had the six inch tack out here, it'd be, you know, quite a bit longer and quite a bit bigger. Also, as you can see, the dew shield portion is pretty short on, on the Acromat here. All right, and it's kind of hard to hide, right? The seven inch and uh, the Mead 17080D, this guy here, this is an F9, so it's the longer focal ratio of, out of all of these. These two are F8, so I mean, they're pretty similar, but F9. But I mean, as you can see, I mean, it is just massive compared to the other scopes. Let me try to get a different angle here. From the top, pretty large, right? I mean, <laughs> you're not gonna mistake that then, you know, for any of the other scopes. So yeah, so size-wise. So again, to kind of sum up the size and like the weight and that type of deal. Um, these two guys, these are kind of like the special case, okay? The six and the seven or like anything above that. Um, you have to be pretty physically fit, you know, not have a bad back to handle these. Five inch, I'd say, you know, um, most people can handle fairly comfortably. Uh, good size. Um, really my favorite size is the four inch um, and I'll discuss that further as we get into kind of more of the visual observing and what you might expect to see with all these guys. All right guys, so we talked about these scopes physically. I mean, you know, obviously there's a physical size difference, right? I mean, you know, there's more of the bigger scope to store, to haul around, you know, you need a bigger amount that type of deal. But let's say, you know, you don't really care about all that and just you're just kind of interested more in like, you know, visually how do these guys compare? Um, you know, I mean, I can make this video like literally 18 hours long and tell you all the nitty and gritties of these because I've used all of these sizes pretty, you know, extensively. Uh, but you don't want to see that, I'm sure. <laughs> so we're going to condense it down, you know, very compactly. So basically, the three inch size scopes, so like the 80 millimeter type of scopes, um, they, for me visually, they are excellent 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 wide hyper wide field scope so anytime i take out one of those things you know to a dark sky star party um you know chances are that sucker is going to have like a 40 millimeter uh explorer scientific the 68 degree or like a 31 uh, millimeter naglier or the explorer scientific 25 millimeter uh, 100 degree like those hyper wide field of views is usually what I have with probably with an O3 filter, depending on what I'm looking at. You know, obviously if I'm looking at like, you know, the Andromeda Galaxy, it's not gonna have a filter. But generally speaking, I'm after those hyper wide type of field of views. Um, to me, that's where the scope shines. So uh, kind of moving on, four inch scope. That's my favorite size scope. So basically with the four inch, you could still get those hyper wide field of views, right? To where you could fit any object really in the nice sky into the field of view. If you have like, you know, those hyper wide field of view eyepieces, awesome, awesome for that. With the four inch um, above what a three inch can do, I feel like it starts to be a pretty good planetary scope. Um, it's not, it doesn't show you all the detail that there is to be seen on most nights, uh, but it gets you like, probably like 90% there, you know. Most nights, if, unless you have like one of those perfect nights, I think a foreign scope will show you like 90% of the stuff there. Uh, so that's really, really awesome. Um, overall, I just feel like it's the most universal scope size. You know, it's still small enough to where it's easier to haul around, doesn't need a big mount. Uh, it gets you those hyper wide field of views. It's an excellent planetary scope. Four inch, that's my favorite size. Personally, if I had to you know, stick with one refractor, and thank the Lord that that's not a problem, right? <laughs> As you can see, uh, we can have more than one refractor. But anyway, uh, if I did have to stick with one refractor, uh, four inch would be it. Uh, it might actually be the FSQ 106, um, I don't know. Uh, but anyhow, going on to the five inches. Five inches, you know, if you're more into the planetary type of stuff, you're more into double stars, a five inch will show you like a hundred percent of what most knights of scene will support. I mean, 
It'll give you like all the detail, unless you live in one of those areas that just has amazing, amazing scene, like night after night after night, and you might want it in a bigger scope. Otherwise, a five inch, you know, good AP over fractal will show you pretty much everything there is to be seen on most nights of you know, on the planets. For deep sky, there are some scopes, you know, I think they compare more or less, you know, we'll not get into the nitty gritty details, but I think they compare uh, pretty favorably to about like an eight inch, like it's say SCT on deep sky. Um, it's a good deep sky scope. Uh, it won't really fit some of the biggest objects. You know, think like the North American Nebula, think uh, uh, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Like those, you know, they kind of start to uh, not really fit too well in the 5 inch. I mean, they still look great, but I prefer how they look in a 4 or even an 80 millimeter or a 3 inch scope. So, anyway. 5 inch, think more of like a planetary scope, still a good deep sky wide field scope. Uh, for wide field, though, I think 4 inch is better. Uh, stepping up to the 6 and 7 inch, uh, those are kind of, you know, they're more of a specialty instrument. So, I mean, I don't feel like a 6 inch scope or even to some extent a 7 inch refractor shows you like all that much more on the plants, unless again you're in one of those really, really awesome nights of seeing then they probably will, especially in a good uh, APO. For deep sky, they're a cool deep sky scope to use from a dark sky site. I mean, I love using, especially the 7 inch. I mean, it gives you kind of like, you know, those, it's kind of hard to describe, but the pinpoint stars, the good contrast, it does give you like kind of a different experience, I'd say, compared to like even like a larger dog, like let's say a 12 or a 16 inch. It will not show you as much as like a 16 inch dog, it's just, you know, it's not going to defy physics. So anyhow, so that's the visual uh, perspective. So um, again, my personal favorite in these for visual, if I had to choose one scope, and thank goodness again, that's not an issue, is the 4 inch. Um, so now let's kind of touch on astrophotography. Alright, kind of switching them back over to the scope type of view. <laughs> I figure you guys are tired of seeing my face by now. So. Um, Quick rundown for astrophotography. If you got like a six inch, or I mean, sorry, seven inch, six inch, these guys, they're, you know, not bad for doing the planets, for like shooting the planets, cause you know, they're uh, pretty long focal length. Um, for deep sky, I mean, you've got to have a heck of a amount to do deep sky, you know, astrophotography with these guys. I'm really like with this size, you know, I consider these more of like a visual instrument. I mean, you know, watch my video where I took a picture of Mars, you know, with this scope. I mean, realistically, an SCT will easily outdo like, you know, a big refractor on even the planets. Uh, deep sky, I mean, yeah, you're probably, you know, chances are looking at like something besides a big refractor because you have to have like a really, really beefy mount to do astrophotography with these. Uh, five inch scope, so you know, this is more of a visual scope, so I'll talk about the astrophysics because a lot of people do use these for astrophotography. Uh, it's f6.2, um, pretty fast out of the factory, um, pinpoint stars, mount wise, you know, something like a Lismondi G11 will easily be able to support that awesome, awesome astrophotography scope. Um, you know, for astrophotography, really. What it comes down to, what it boils down to, a lot of people, you know, like, you know, like, think, like, you know, what size they should get or whatever. Think of your scope just like you would your camera lens, right? So, you know, look at the objects that you want to do. If you want to do those crazy big nebulas, you know, you want, like, the three-inch APOs, right? Because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's basically kind of like having, like, a short lens on your camera, right? Versus, you know, going up, it's kind of like having a longer lens, essentially. So that's that's what it really boils down to. Like, I, uh, these days I do astrophotography with the FSQ-106. Um, that thing's crazy fast. Uh, and uh, it already has a field flattener built in. But again, um, really for astrophotography, you're probably looking at the 5, 4, 3 inch, or, you know, even smaller, maybe like a 60 millimeter. A lot of people start with that. And yeah, it just kind of, you know, works as, you know, as a lens essentially. So, you know, the, the bigger the object you, you're shooting, the smaller the lens you use, the smaller the object, the longer focal length you need to have, you know, to kind of capture at a decent scale. 
Simple as that. People are you know, trying to make it more complicated than that. Uh, to me, that's just all it comes down to. All right, and just in case you guys were wondering if I could actually pick up the seven inch APO, here she is. And this way I'll kind of keep the conclusion short too because this thing is actually pretty heavy. So anyhow, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.